Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing part 4 for math for paper 3H from June 2011. Alright, so question 22 is asking you to solve the simultaneous equations. Now, first of all, I'm going to label these equations 1 and 2. And there are many ways of solving it. There are two ways, actually, elimination or substitution. But I'm going to use this method called elimination. Um, I mean, sorry, substitution. So the way in which you do substitution is that you basically make either y or x is subject in one formula like it is here and they've given it to you and you just substitute it into the other equation so we're going to do that right now so you get x squared plus replace the y because y is equal to 2x minus 3 I'm going to replace the y's here with 2x minus 3 so x squared plus 2x minus 3 the whole squared is equal to 2 so if I just simplify this I'm going to get x squared plus 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 equals to 2. Now, I hope you guys remember your expansion. I'm just going to rush through this a bit. So it's just like here, 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 and here. And what you're going to get is 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x, which is minus 12x plus 9 is equal to 2. So 5x squared minus 12x plus 9 uh, subtract 2 on both sides, sorry, do that and you're going to get plus 7 uh, double plus is equal to 0. So now it's like a, a quadratic equation we have, to, we have to solve. So I'll just wait one second yeah, so when we're solving a quadratic equation, we have to first factorize it. So in this case, we're actually looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 5 times 7. Correct, these two numbers. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 35 and add to give me negative 12. So if you just think a bit for a second, you'll figure out those two numbers are negative 7 and negative 5. So what you do is you split this into negative 7x and negative 5x like we've done previously in these tutorials. So minus 7x minus 5x plus 7. Actually, it would be better if you did it the other way. It's simpler. So it's um, minus 5x. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Minus 7x plus 7. And then we just factorize each side separately. So what we're going to get is 5 common. 5x is divisible in uh, both. So we divide both by 5x. So we get x minus 1 minus 7, which is divisible by both, and you get x minus 1. Remember, these two have to stay the same. Now you factorize x minus 1 out of the whole equation. You get x minus 1, 5x minus 7. And this all is equal to 0. So I'm just going to rush through this. Remember, we could say that x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 1. And we can also say that 5x minus 7 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 7 over 5. So we have these two values of x. All we have to do is substitute it back into any one of the equations. I'm going to substitute it back into the first equation. So we're going to get y is equal to 2 times x. Instead of x, I'll put 1 minus 3. So we get y is equal to 2 minus 3, which is, so y is equal to negative 1. So your first solution to this equation is 1 comma negative 1, right? Because x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 1 when x is equal to 1. And the second solution would be substituting 7 over 5 into this equation. So you get y equals 2 times 7 over 5 minus 3. And what you're going to get is y equals 14 over 5 minus 3. And so y is actually equal to negative 1 over 5. So your next solution is actually um, 1, 2 over 5. I just put this into a mixed fraction form. I hope you guys know how to do that. And negative 1 over 5. That's your other solution. So x is equal to this and y is equal to this. Those are your two. So those are your two coordinate solutions to the simultaneous equation. Okay, so finally, the last question in this paper. Um, in this question, they've given you 
a cylinder and a sphere and they're asking and they've told you that the total surface area of the cylinder over the surface area of the sphere is equal to 2. Now honestly this was the I did this exam actually and this is the trickiest question I found but honestly it's really not that tricky I was just having a mental block back then. So to all you have to and they asked me to find the value of volume of cylinder to, and over volume of sphere. Now you might be thinking how am I going to find the value I don't have R just don't worry because just work with what you've got. So, first of all, work with this equation here. The total surface area of the cylinder over the surface area of the sphere is equal to 2. So, what is the total surface area of a cylinder? So, what, what is it? What is the formula for it? Okay, so in your, in your formula booklet, which is given at the start of the exam, they've given you the curved surface area of the cylinder, and that is 2 pi r h. Okay? But that's just the curved part. Now we need the bottom, with the bottom circle and the top circle, right? Because that's, that's the total, total surface area of the uh, cylinder. And so if you want to find the total so if you want to find the area of this and this, all you have to do is do plus 2 times pi r squared. Because technically there are two circles, and the area of one circle is pi r squared. And you add that to the curved surface area, so you've got the total surface area of that. So that's done. And over the surface area of the sphere. Now the surface area of any sphere, and this is given in your, in your formula booklet at the start of the paper. The surface area of the sphere is actually 4 pi r squared. Okay? So the total surface area of the cylinder over the total, sur of, over the total surface area of the sphere is equal to 2. Okay? And you put this in formula terms. Now all you have to do is really simplify this. So if I multiply both sides by 4 pi r squared, I'm going to get 2 pi r h plus 8, I mean sorry, plus 2 pi r squared is equal to 8 pi r squared. Now just try to solve it normally. And uh, you'll just figure out, you'll just get it along the way. It's just like, just just try to solve it and you'll kind of figure it out. So just subtract both sides by 2 pi r squared. You're going to get 2 pi r h is equal to 8 pi r squared minus 2 pi r squared, which is just 6 pi r squared. So now the aim is, because they haven't given you an exact value of height. And what you want to find out is height in terms of r. So you can substitute into the next, um, into the next equation and then you can find and then you can find the value of volume of cylinder and volume of sphere. So you just got, want to find the value of h. So make h the subject. So just um, divide both sides by 2 pi r and you're going to get h is equal to 6 pi r squared over 2 pi r. Now the pi and the pi cancel, r squared and r cancel and 6 and 2 are divisible by each other to give I'll just, let me just <laughs> divide the whole thing. So, yeah, let me just start that again. Sorry. So, 6 pi r squared over 2 pi r. So, r and r squared cancel, pi and pi cancel. 6 and 2 divide by each other to give you 3. So, h is actually equal to 3r. So, now that you know what that h is equal to 3r, you can actually solve this equation. So, one sec h is equal to 3r. Now they're asking you to find the value of the volume of cylinder over the volume of the sphere. Now if you refer again to your formula sheet above, yeah, you can see that the volume of the cylinder is actually pi r squared h. And we found the h earlier over here. So you want to find the volume of cylinder over the volume of the sphere. And the volume of the sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Okay? So you want to find the value of this. Now, we have h is equal to 3r. So let's just substitute that in. Make it simpler. Make everything in terms of r. So pi r squared times 3r over 4 over 3 sorry, pi r cubed. So if we simplify this again, we're going to get pi r, I mean, 3 pi r cubed over 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now this is my favorite part, cancelling. 
So this and this are divisible by each other to give me 1, correct? So I have, in the end, I have 3 over 4 over 3, because pi r cubed and pi r cubed cancel. And if I just simplify this fraction, you're going to get 9 over 4. And that is the value for the volume of the cylinder over the volume of the sphere. See, this question wasn't that hard. Okay, thanks a lot for watching the video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions, if it's a bit tricky or anything. And rate this video, and also subscribe to this channel. It's not that hard. Just click a small little button, and it would mean a lot. So thanks, guys, and see you in the next video.